Africa is a continent rich with opportunity. And when business and communities come together, its astonishing potential begins to be felt. With the Millennium Development Goals steering these partnerships, Africa's future is being rewritten with innovation, foresight, and inclusivity. Crossing the length and breadth of the continent, our journalists uncover these stories and share them with the world. Join us now for remarkable stories of partnerships across Africa, building the future and changing lives. It's Africa's time. It's more than 10 years since the country emerged from more than 14 years of brutal civil war. It's a city that's filled with stories, all sorts of people from all walks of life, busying themselves with the daily chores of getting by and hoping to rebuild the country beyond the telltale signs of its past. But our story begins at Monrovia's port, and the man to take me there is Derry Menier, the coolest dude in all of Monrovia, a taxi driver and very proud Liberian. Zabe with our foreign news. And now, to end the news, a recap of the headlines. As health workers teach a ghost law, health minister has threatened dismissal. The Centre for Transparency and Accountability. Your roads need to be fixed. I think you must tell President Ellen that the road no, roads need no, to be fixed. No, Look at his puddle. No, 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 it's not that. The road cannot face like, just like that. It's fixed down. She has a road. She faces the whole place. Jersey Road? Yeah, she faces the whole thing. She has the whole road. She faces the place. You like her? I love her. I think you love Ellen. I love Ellen for hard work. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to going to the port because I want to, you know, I want to see something that's working that really wasn't working before. I don't know what the port was like. It was captured by the rebel troops. They took all the port from the government troops. So, like, the whole port was like, it was just waste. You know, this is why the librarians don't have access to food. Yeah. We're going to the port now. It's going to be very interesting to see it. Yeah. Is it different now? It must be yeah. different. I know. What's it like now? A different version of the country. It is. It's very free. People are good. It, it feels free for you. For everyone. I feel very free, yeah. very free for everyone. <laughs> so if you are good, welcome to Liberia. I like Liberia. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, 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 My name is Brian Fogel. I'm the uh, managing director of APM Terminals Liberia. Hello, Brian. Morning, Lisa. How it's are amazing. you? Amazing. I'm great, thank you. It's so impressive. Wow. Um, What's happening? Uh, it's an amazing sight. The ship has uh, it's just berthed. It's just come in from Europe. And um, we're just preparing now to start discharging the cargo. How do you feel when you see the ships coming in through those heads? I've got a lovely office that overlooks the harbour entrance, so when I see that ship coming in, I have a little smile on my face. 
You know, I'm uh, envisioning what it actually means. It means the country's open, cargo's coming in, activity is happening. Gives you a good warm feeling inside, you know? It's the most magnificent sight. It is. I came here a couple of years ago and this place was not a functioning working in port. And to see the difference in the activity now, it makes you feel good, you know? You, you can see a difference being made in the country growing, which is really positive. We actually uh, won a 25-year concession from the government of Liberia with the objective to invest $120 million and redevelop the port, prim primarily the uh, berth. The berth was collapsing in the water, and so it's a big priority for us to get it built as soon as possible. We demolished it completely. Uh, we spent $50 million, completed it nine months ahead of the agreement with the government. Uh, so obviously we and the government were extremely pleased with that. You know, we have an inclusive partnership with the government of Liberia to develop this place, develop the people. And this is not just a short-term partnership, this is a partnership that goes on for 25 years. Matilda, very nice Could you kind of walking? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Madame Parker, how important is a port to a country's economy? The port is that important that it's called the gateway to the Liberian economy, which simply means that most of our import and export into the country comes through the port. The impact to the Port Authority, to Liberia's GDP, is exceptional. With APM being responsible for all container and cargo handling in our busiest port, it is very, very important that we continue to encourage them to grow the business. We help them and, um, in any way we can, because by helping them, we're also helping the economy. I'm only happy when I actually see ships on that berth. It shows the country is developing and I'm doing business. And I'm doing business. <laughs> what are you up to at the moment? No, I don't know, I don't know this. Okay, this one uh, just here. M-I-E-U-0-0-1-2-8-0. Yes, yes. -E -E yeah. Is that the right one? There you are. I'll let you off before you get to load the wrong box. Yeah, that's good. OK, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. See you. Now, when you look at Liberia today, you see tremendous changes from, say, 10 years ago, which is when the peace agreement was signed. Uh, what you have now is 10 years of stability and peace, uh, 10 years of rehabilitation of infrastructure, of uh, investments, and uh, also generally uh, an upbeat uh, population which had seen war for over 13 years. The Monrovia port is extremely important to uh, the Liberian uh, economy, both as the gateway into Liberia, but also the gateway out of Liberia for most of the, uh, of the businesses. Uh, so you need a functioning port. Uh, and uh, over time, of course, the Liberian port was, uh, like most everything else, uh, destroyed by the war. Uh, but it's been rehabilitated now. So the fact that the port is working efficiently uh, is in itself a, a sign uh, that uh, Liberia is on the right path, I think, for growth. And uh, what is needed in my mind is just the growth has to be broadened uh, and shared. And it must be growth that generates jobs to make an impact on the lives of people. APM terminals have been training Liberians and changing lives. Jacqueline Pei is currently the only female multi-skilled heavy-duty equipment operator and she's quite famous in these parts. Are you Jacqueline? Yes, yes. Oh, it's good to meet you. I've come a long way. Yeah, welcome. welcome. Thank you, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. I was born 1979, March I've been a single mother for almost nine years, taking care of my kids, making them be a good child by the grace of God. My father was killed in the war because of his 
appearance. He was a tall guy, and they took him to be one of the Madingo tribe. It was difficult for our mother to carry us alone, but by the grace of God, we made it because she was always there. So I'm happy to be a single mother because I know things are hard, but it is well. It came a time where I have to go in the bush, in the rural path. I have to burn charcoal, cut down this tree. I look at myself and say, but I don't, Lord, I don't belong in the bush. I'm not better than those that are in the bush, but I, I don't think this bush life is good for me. And then I came to town and I started to move on, encourage myself. And today I find myself satisfied. I know that I, I was a woman, I need, and I have responsibility. I need to stand for myself because my mother is old now. She, she don't have the time, she don't have anything. I have to stand to do something for her because, and for my kids. So I was forced to find myself in the field of men to do something so that I can get money fast. When I was a little girl, I really didn't like machines. I was very afraid. When I see people driving, ah, I'm running away. But as times go by, life changes. Men, mind groups, and everything change in life. When you meet new people, yes, and they say to me, Lisa, what do you do? I say, I'm a journalist. When you meet new people, and they say, what do you do? I say, I'm a, I'm a multi-scale operator. <laughs> And sometimes they ask, what is multi-scale? I say, well, um, I operate all machines. So that's why I don't drive small car because I always use the force. You know, um, I'm very happy to be with the company because Liberia is a place to find job now. It's not an easy time. So I find myself in the terminal working. I'm proud. I'm appreciative because I find myself working while other friends out there looking for a job. They cannot get it. What's this machine coming up behind you now? Um, that machine is an uh, anti-handout, anti-handout machine. Do you drive that one? Yes. It's a cool machine. It's a very good machine. I said, I love that machine because it packed the container perfectly. The Liberian Civil War destroyed Monrovia's port and in the post-war years it struggled to get by. In 2010 a concession was signed with APM terminals and since then things have remarkably improved. We have a number of things we have to comply with. One is to rebuild the berth which was the big priority. Uh, other things we have to localise as much as possible. Uh, we already have 50% of our senior management is local. Our entire workforce besides that is local. Uh, within two years, we'll be up to 75% of senior management will be Liberians. We spend an enormous amount of money and time on training our workforce. So what happens after 25 years, Brian? 25 years, we give it all back, including trained people, massive infrastructure, and a working operational ports. We do hope that after 25 years, they'll ask us to stay on because of the contribution we make. But only time will tell. My name is Chidu Wallow. I am the sales manager for Merck's Liberia. Anyone in the market who goes to buy bananas, the bananas come from Brazil into Liberia. How that happens, nobody cares. But it's all done behind the scene in the shipping industry. And of course, APMT in the supply chain has a very key role to play. Okay. Uh, we're over here on the corner of Africa almost. Uh, most of our cargo, you'll see the ship outside, that just came from here, up in Algeciras in Spain. Yeah. 
and then we'll start from here, come round the coast of Africa, all the way down. It will stop in Freetown on the way because part of its cargo is for Freetown. Then after Freetown, it comes to Monrovia, Liberia. So you've got 25 years to make this port <laughs> the shining light exactly. of West Africa. And that is our plan. That's the plan. <laughs> so this map, your one, that shows the Kakata Highway. Exactly. The one we're going to go on. And this is Monrovia, and this is Kakata, so this is quite a major artery for the country. Unfortunately, this is one of the few roads in Liberia that is passable, especially in the rainy season. When I was looking at the map, I could see that this is the road that takes all that produce, all the stuff that comes through on those containers into, into Liberia. But there's a problem with the road still. It was damaged. Yeah. There's our main wall. There's a main wall for, for most of our countries. The roads that bring food, like rest, or, or bananas, plenty, all on the village. There's a main wall. The road been damaged for a very long time. But government's going to fix? The government will be all the to fix it. fix it already. On this road, a huge big container is going to be going on this road, yep. a huge truck. Since the APM terminal's concession began, trade in and out of the port has increased on average 50% a year, and the Kakata Highway, clearly in need of some serious work, is the major thoroughfare that carries goods to and from the port. The road leads us inland to some of the Liberian businesses that make use of the port. Arrow Alliance is a sawmill about an hour and a half's drive from Monrovia. So these are trees that have basically lived their life, rubber trees. Exactly. These are trees that are no longer producing lapex, so their lifetime is over. So the point is that we're going to come down anyway? Yes. Yeah. Whether by me or someone else. Yeah. But the only difference is if it's brought down with some farmers, they are going to use them for charcoal only. So you're environmentally friendly. He's environmentally friendly. Liberia is one of a kind. It's very different from other countries. Uh, you have to be completely dependent on yourself. You do not have any governments that gave you aid or anything like that. So you are basically on your own in creating your own business. But we definitely understand at the moment the capacity of the government. We are not complaining, but we hope gradually it will become more better and more efficient. My most important concern is apart from investing and making money as well, is seeing this country go forward. This is something that I wanted to be as it was before and maybe better. We are currently having a staff numbers of 70 people. When I see those containers leaving from Arrow Alliance to the port, it makes me feel very happy uh, because it makes us feel that we are contributing more towards building Liberia. When I go out there and I see the faces of our customers and what potential they can achieve with the economy and the way um, trade uh, progresses. It's amazing. My name is Abigail Yuri Miller. Um, welcome. This is Ed Gill's Ore Recycling Plant in Carisburg, Liberia. Our business has been using the port for more than 22 years um, and it's been quite a journey using the port because it's such an essential part of our business. We've seen a significant improvement with regards to our business with the port since APMT came in three years ago. Basically, it facilitates trade. Even if I found someone in China, India, South America who wanted to buy a product for me, if I did not have the port to bring in equipment, it just makes everything work. It basically is like the, the heart of the economy. So how is business? Business is good. How good? <laughs> Quite good. <laughs> Currently, we have 25 new employees with the opening of this factory, and we hope that we can increase that number 
in the very near future. I've seen a lot of lives change because in our industry of recycling, because it, it's waste, people have been able to use that to improve their lives. You have people who, we have a lot of our technicians in our factory who have learned, you know, to use machines and they've been able to become technical uh, technicians and being able to learn. So I've seen a lot of life change in our different businesses. I stand here and I see the trucks come, get loaded, oil get pumped into it, and the trucks drive off. Such satisfaction from seeing that process. It remains a very important um, sector of the Liberian economy because it is in the small and medium scale enterprises that jobs are created. The port is extremely important uh, for the reasons of trade um, and exposure to international markets and the receipt of imports. Um, it's also important as a source of uh, jobs and it can also support entrepreneurship, um, particularly if uh, local entrepreneurs are encouraged to participate in the supply chain uh, for the companies. That's a tremendous uh, source of, uh, of growth and employment opportunities. I've learned a lot on this trip about inclusive partnerships and the way they support regular people and businesses in the host country providing jobs, dignity, and opportunity. Lisa, welcome at my house. Oh, it's lovely to be here, somewhere cool as well. Uh -huh. Jackie. Yes, yeah, this is. Jackie is teaching her son, <laughs> Joshua, what life is going to be when he's big. I want him to be a truck driver. <laughs> we are living life, but you need to be thinking ahead of time. That's why in the, in the life of man, you grow up as a child, you get big and do other things. That's how life is like. You have to start from somewhere before you become a hero. So life is not just, I will just depend on my aunt, I depend on my uncle, or depend on, no. You have to do something for yourself so that life can keep going on with you. Do you feel like a hero? Yes, I feel like I'm a, I'm a hero. Why? Because the area that I find myself now, I feel I can no longer go down easily. Yes, so I feel like I'm a hero. I think to the extent that uh, the port has enhanced opportunity uh, for uh, macroeconomic growth, uh, to the extent that it has generated jobs and uh, to the extent that it has provided uh, livelihoods uh, to communities, to families and all. I think it's been critical uh, to the realization of several goals and uh, it also helps that you've got a government uh, that support investment, private investment and uh, is open to international trade uh, going forward. When you see people smile and people the possibilities it gives people to be able to do what they want to do. It's, it's, it's a great feeling to be part of, part of that chain, part of the people making that happen. We've already invested $120 million on different parts of the port from equipment to training to systems. And we now plan to invest another $30 million above the concession requirements and redeveloping the landside parts of the port. But no, we, we make a difference and uh, I do three and five year assignments and to see at the end of that period a dramatic change in the country for what our company has done is uh, very inspiring for me. It's business as usual for APM terminals, but for me I've been most touched by the people in the story and the way this public-private partnership is truly changing lives. <laughs>